Oh, we got a heads up. Ace king against nines. Yes! Hold, baby. Come on, hold. Come on, baby. Hold, good flop. Hold the flop. We need a nine now. Squeeze that river. Come on, nine. What's that? That's not a nine. Oh, it could be. It is. It's a nine. Yeah! yeah! Holy s! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yes! I can't believe it. We doubled. And the days of the digital squeeze are officially upon us as Daniel Negreanu, 29 caches across the summer, happy for a change in his stream. Welcome to another edition of the World Series of Poker. Preview show from the Poker Go studio inside Aria Resort and Casino here at City Center. Ali Najad joined by Brent Hanks. Yeah. And everybody chomps at the bit right off the top of the show. You know how it goes, Brent. They all want to know, what have you been doing for the last seven days? Whole lot of nothing, Ali, per usual. <laughs> now, I've been, you know, on the work grind. I have a lot going on behind the uh, Poker Go scenes. No, you don't. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, see, my reads are still good, you know? Reads my live spot reads. On. My live spot reads. On. I got really a new shirt on. here. That's, that's new. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's about it, Ali. That's all I've got going on. That's all you've got going on. That's it, yeah. It's a lovely shade of green. Mm. St. Patty's, St. Patty's special. <laughs> all right. Well, let's, let's get serious for a second. Okay. Let's put my reads aside, and let's focus on those whose reads hoisted them to some six-figure paydays. Five out of the six last events on the GG calendar featured those sorts of paydays, and the international side of the spectrum continues to furnish names that we may not be familiar with, but there's at least one you know, Brent. Absolutely. Event number 69, Nick Mamoni. That was good for $302,000 and change. Nice. No doubt about it. And Nick's going to be joining us a little bit later on in the show. And mm -hmm. now that we're kind of deep into the GG side and we have the World Series U.S. side of the spectrum completed, let's check in on some of the tallies going on right now. You see right there, the biggest overall winner. Now, this is strictly from GG, Daniel DeVoris. 1.494 knocking on the door of 1.5. And look at the balance out of Negrano. Yeah, unbelievable. Negrano actually has a total of 29 caches across the board throughout this entire World Series of Poker. Just killing it. And I think without question, the biggest story of the week, Brent, of course, event number 70, where we find the chip leader, one Jason Kuhn, in the hunt for his first bracelet and the biggest payout of the summer, $1.8 million from that $10 million guaranteed. Yeah, and you know Kuhn is definitely has his eyes set on the prize. He just wants to bring home a piece of hardware. Certainly uh, got to be a little bit of a monkey on his back at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think he plays cash game pots that are bigger than some bracelet first place payouts. But nevertheless, you know that he's chomping at the bid to kind of get this monkey off his back. And we brought him in to join us Right now on Skype, there he is, Jason Kuhn. And Jason, I've known you a long time. The one thing that I think everybody who knows you well enough knows is the tremendous amount of discipline that you bring to poker. Walk us through your online prep. What's that process like? Uh, it's really, um, with the internet, it's just kind of like being prepped way ahead of time because it's such an intense day, really. I try not to overthink it. I like wake up, do a walk, get my head right. And that's that. You boys, you boys good? Am I disconnected? No, you're good, buddy. Oh, sorry. I see you guys look. At, I see you boys looking to the right. I yeah, can yeah, see yeah. Don't worry there. about where we're looking. <laughs> Just worry about letting us know what we need to do in order to be as successful as you are. So prepping a lot ahead of time, you were saying? Yeah, I mean, I'm just ready to go. Like, you know, preparation, say for this final table. Luckily, we get six days to get ready for this thing. A lot of people have asked me, like, what are you going to do morning of? Um, Elliot Rowe was nice enough to say, hey, let's do like a little 15 minute thing to get your mind right. Um, so I'm definitely going to do that. But um, I'll be ready for this thing by tomorrow. You know, there's there's nothing. The work's already been done. So I just have to go in and do my job. And that, Jason, that leads me to my question as well. I mean, when you're not playing poker, how do you balance your life? Walk us through your day in that regard as well. It's really tough, man. Um, it's it's hard to want to be really good at, at this game and also try to be a normal person. It's basically impossible because, say, for instance, the last few weeks we've been playing those big cash games and I'll play for six hours or whatever. And then for the next five hours that I'm not playing, I'm thinking about every single situation that I was in. Like it just randomly pops up in my head and 
they those thoughts kind of linger so it's really hard to be like a present normal person and be very competitive at the highest levels um generally it takes me a few weeks of not playing poker to start feeling like a normal person again to be honest well when the landscape of poker these days includes people that are dedicating as much effort as you are not everybody but many people out there what do you think the future of poker is going to be like are we going to be able to continue to grow yeah definitely i i don't think that every person I think that there have been disciplined, hardworking professionals in poker for 50 years. It, the tools of learning are different, but you don't have to be some psychopath to make a great living playing poker. Like 99% of the people that are making a living playing poker are like work pretty hard, but it, they have, you know, I won't say normal lives, but they do a lot of things other than poker, you know? It's just if you want to play the highest levels of poker, you're not going to get to live a normal life. But Poker is going to be great. You're going to be able to win money at it for a very long time without being, you know, the 20th best player in the world. That leads me to my final question here, Jason. Along the similar lines as the future, where do you see yourself in the next five years? I just don't know because, um, say, for instance, this spring, I had like a, like a gigantic amount of action this spring um, playing cash games. And... I basically played like 80 hours a week for eight weeks straight. And uh, at the end of it, I was so burnt out. I remember thinking, whoa, this like actually might be it for me. Like maybe I'm, I don't have the passion to play anymore um, because, you know, I've, I've done what I set out to do and then some. And uh, maybe that's it. Maybe I get to be like a normal person now. And then like a month went by and I rested and then I woke up and I was like, I really want to study some poker right now. And then like. A week went by and I was like, I really want to play some poker right now. So as long as I have that drive and that those emotions, I don't care how much money I have or whatever accolades people say that I've, you know, accomplished. If, if I have the itch to play and, and the desire to work, I'll continue to play. But if that goes away, I'm out. So what is the end game then? You're just waiting until you no longer have that itch and then maybe it's time for you and Bianca to bring some baby coons into the world or? Baby Coons is going to be brought into this world sooner than later. We're going to start trying for that soon. Um, so my volume will slow down, of course, but uh, I think I can manage being a pops and being somewhat on the top of my game. I'll just have to play a lot less. Yeah. Well, listen, obviously, we believe in you tremendously. Thank you so much for taking the time. Always a gentleman. Appreciate you, Jason. Yep. Absolute beast. I'll tell you what, when that kid is really focused on the engine and just harnessing his craft, he's unstoppable. I, I consider him to be the best all-round player at No Limit Hold'em on the planet. Not just No Limit Hold'em. He's played some short deck. He plays cash. He plays tournament. It's weird, though. It's bittersweet for me to hear him say that he felt the flame flicker and he thought that he was going to go and live a normal life because as a friend, I'm like, I want that for you. Because you know how many sacrifices one has to make to ascend to those levels of poker, the hours, the effort. And yet he wasn't able to pull himself away. And, of course, we kind of want to see him in the saddle because he's great to watch. If he steps away from the game, though, uh, good for Bianca, really. Yeah. All right. Let's get a look at that final table, which is set. The 25K 10 million guarantee, which shows 39 big blinds at the top for Jason Kuhn. But... He's going to have to contend with some other talent. There are four Americans at this final table. Of course, Jason Kuhn up top, Shankar Palai, Aram Zobian, and Big Huni. Shankar has two bracelets looking for his third. And of course, Jason Kuhn still in search of that first piece of hardware. I'll link. And we turn our attention to events that have been decided. How about Dimitro Bistrov Zorov? He won his first bracelet in event 65, the $600 No Limit Hold'em Deep Stack. Good for a cool 227. Yeah, you nailed it, by the way. Great pronunciation. I like these guys in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, Ali. That could oh, be you and I someday. You want to talk about nailed it. How about A7? Binky right away on a clean flop. No club in the pocket. Queens and just a cool two outer to fade. Is that a binky I heard of that? It was a binky. I like the use of binky. And here's a look at the remainder of that final table, a veritable cornucopia of marble-mouthed, multi-syllabic <laughs> names. Uh, including the third place. Seven. Yeah, no, I'll go Matthew Train. That is difficult to say. Wow. Easier said than done, Ali. You punted on first down there. I just want you to know that. Event number 66, Toby Joyce. I should have let you take that one too, huh? $800 PLO winner. All smiles. A buck 39 in the back pocket. 
And here's how the four card action came to a close. Ace 10, Queen Jack flopped the Broadway gutty and top two against the Broadway gutty. That's Mark Herm, Ali, online legend, Dip Throng. Unfortunately, he is uh, drawing dead. There would be no thronging after the queen hit the turn. And Toby filled up. Here's the remainder of that final table. And uh, seventh again. Take a pass at that one. Oh, yeah, that is Gregor Z. Durkowski. Plays for the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> That's actually plausible. Yeah. That's actually right. plausible. Let's keep it on the line. And event number 67 taken down by Gregor Mueller. A little bit more modest payday in the $500 limit hold'em. A bracelet and 45K. Yes, and don't confuse him with Greg Mueller, FBT. I'm talking to you, Mike Matisso. This is a different guy, different spelling. He's from Austria. 6-7 against Queen Jack was looking oh so good on the flop, but then the turn disaster did have a heart out. Running flush was not there, however, and the Austrian took it down. And here's how the rest of that final table shook up. Take a, take a pass at, at second. Second, yes, that is uh, Bruno Benjamin Button from Albuquerque. I'll accept that. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> and here's some interesting takeaways from those three events, including well done by the Romanian Ivan Constantine turning 50 bucks into a 23K eighth place finish. It's a bit of a mystery, Ali. That's the best photo we could find of him, believe it or not. Well, the IRS in Romania is brutal. Time now for what is fast becoming a tradition and is irrefutably good for poker, which mm. is outlandish takes from Brent Hanks as we delve in to good for poker. You ready to play? Yes. Okay, first and foremost, okay. poker, social media. Good for poker or not? Poker, social media is my favorite part of poker, Ali. I love how, how vulgar it is. I love the toxicity at times, and I love responding and gifts and gifs to all of it. I won't partake, but I'll respond in gifs and gifs. I feel like it's a huge time sink, though. Yeah, look, guilty as charged. All right, <laughs> next, good for poker, in-game chat. I was starting to get used to the uh, dot, dot, dot uh, it, with in-game chat. Now I'm sort well, of on World Series the, of Poker. It's yes, the, the on the dot com. Now I'm used to the GG. Everything goes. You've got the snap cam. You can do 15 seconds of whatever you want. Negrano, don't get any ideas. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. Okay, but th there's people that abuse it sometimes, and they berate others. Obviously, it's a tool that can be used We're for bad. We're all adults. I mean, can you not handle a little I bit of... I call that bluff. Not language, everybody who Ali? plays online poker is an adult. Well, uh, it's good for the game, Ali. I like right. in-game. It's your opinion, not mine. All right, good for poker. Plexiglass as a savior to live games. Yeah, I mean, we're in the middle of a friggin' pandemic. Uh, you get put up plexiglass. You want to play poker inside of a poker room? You got to have the plexiglass around, Ali. I mean, it, what's the upside? We can't just get away with can't masks. Can't people live? We can't just have masks. Why do you have to pen us in? Like I don't know, Ali. Animals? I'm not an expert, but I don't mind the plexiglass. I'm trying to live here, Ali. All Come right, on. I get it. I actually saw a really cool thing where somebody took his cards and put them up against the plexiglass <laughs> there you go. as like a needle. He's like, I don't even know what this other one is, and I'm still moving all in. All right, good for poker, a mini main event live here in Vegas. Okay, a mini main event live here in Vegas. Uh, I'm envisioning a little bit of maybe the plexiglass that we noticed. I think it's good for poker. Let's bring back a little dose of everything that we miss. Live poker, chasing the main event glory. 2020 is clearly going to be a unique year that we're going to remember. Throw a little main event in there, Ali. I, don't know. I feel like if it's not the real thing, why are we bothering? It's a little bit diluted. It's a little bit watered down, but hey, that's just me. Now moving from mini mains to the big main event on GG. It's going to be coming up. Here's a look. Day one flights. There's going to be several of them available. Continuing through August 30th, 25 million guaranteed. Brent, are you going to put Hank's Bucks at risk? I wish. 20, I mean, 25 million guaranteed. If I had that much Hank's Bucks, I would. It's just five grand. Shake the couch to Oh, boy. What kind of couch do you have? Well, here's a few guys that aren't going to need to buy their next couch from Ikea, including Anson Zhang, the winner of event number 68, taking down a buck 50 in the $500 deep stack. There's nothing wrong with Ikea, Ali. You got to make it wrong yourself. with having the best hand, Ali. How about this? There's something wrong with Queen Jack against King Queen, especially on this flop where you're just praying for a chop, maybe a backdoor filly, but 
Neither of those outcomes were available. With the board paired on the end. And Ching Sang, the screen name for Anson. Took it down, beating Mohaiman Ashrafi. You can pronounce something on there. I'm gonna go with Malcolm Trainer, sixth place for 31 grand. That's what you went with. And how about eighth, Sasaki? How about the guy that's gonna be joining us in a little bit, Nick Mamoni, the marathon winner. Interesting story about how he wound up in that event and then eventually taking it down. Good for over 300K in number 69. Absolutely. Nice finish here for Mr. Mamoni, King A. Yeah, he was behind against the ace five, but that flop put him squarely in front. You see the percentages creeping past 90%, just had to fade the ace, which he, of course, successfully did. And all the beautiful cash was shipped his way digitally, besting the Brazilian Diego Batar as we get a look at the remainder of the final table. Joe Torre, former manager of the Yankees, finishing in third place. That's not who that is. And Burt Stevens. Related to Cat Stevens, Stevens, finishes in ninth. That's like a good lounge singer name. No, no disrespect to Bert. You know somebody who's not going to be joining anyone at a final table in event number 70 is one Stephen Chidwick, courtesy of these two queens. He three bet him free against the suited connector. Oh, this isn't fair. Oh. Not fair at all. He ran into the nuts on the flop. Saquon from Canada, check called. And then it went check, check on the turn. No board pair on the end. The backdoor hearts there. Saquon rips it. And it was bye-bye, Stevie. Yeah. Just a cooler, man. Ice cold. Mm. The check back on the turn? I don't know. I might put some chips out there. Hua Huan Fang, event number 71 winner. Just put 50 shekels at risk to pick up 211 dimes. Yeah, sink your teeth into this. Let's take a look at this final hand as well. Nothing, Nothing but the good. The Chinese flag up against Xu Kui Zhao. King six against A6. It's just not fair. You need both cards live there. How it's is this? It's just really a little little life here though. A little gutter ball. Not to be the board pairs on the end. Wah Juan takes it down. Talk about ROI, Brent. 50 to 211. I mean, I can say three of the D Lou, sixth place. Dean Lipscomb, eighth, and uh, Wade Gillette in ninth place. You can take the rest, Ali. <laughs> And joining us now, yet another player who has done well for himself this summer, etching his first bracelet, one Nick Mamoni, the event number 69 winner. And Nick, the first thing that we ask most everybody who comes on here, especially if it's your first, what was it like in the room? Walk me through those emotions. Um, I mean, it was exciting uh, just to play through a field of like 1,500 people. I think the tournament started, um, it was technically an Asia bracelet. So it started really early at 8 a.m. And I didn't know, um, or maybe a 7, but anyways, it was um, it was an event that I didn't really plan to play. I, I woke up and I was starting my Sunday session and I saw the tournament and I figured, okay, I'll, I'll register it. So I played it, lost a flip, busted, and I was really going back and forth, should I play it again? And the field was really big. I gambled, I took a shot and played it again. Um, and then 14 hours later, I found myself at the FT and obviously there's a lot of adrenaline and um it was really interesting when, when on gg poker when you go from you know the second final table to the final table all the all the screen names switch to the real names so i had no idea who anybody was and then suddenly it switches and i know like four or five of the names at the final table and i'm like no way this is this guy this is that guy and then trying to piece that together and figure out where you're going to sit who you who, who you want to have position on um, so it's just a lot of dynamics once you get to that FT, and it was really exciting. Nothing that 303,000 won't fix. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Nick, I have known you for a long time. Uh, I, I got to ask you this. What does your regular day look like if you're not just grinding poker for all hours? Um, a regular day, I mean, I love to spend time with my kids. Um, I love to play sports. Play, I play basketball and soccer whenever I can. Um, I like to go in nature and go hiking, things like that. Um, and I, lost, I spend a lot of my free time reading, trying to learn about what's going on in our world, how to make this world better. And um, I have, you know, a big place in my heart for Honduras, where I lived for, you know, for many years. And I still visit on a regular basis. But I help a lot of kids there who come from single mother homes and from broken families. And um, so really, that's an extra motivation for me to win in poker because I could take a lot of that money and, um, you know, really enact 
some really important change and provide some nutrition for a lot of children who don't have it. So, I mean, obviously my, my question was gonna be what you do when you're not playing poker. You kind of touched on that advocacy and, and the charitable uh, things that you, that you do. But one of the other things that we spied earlier on when we first called you up on Skype was, was a little bottle of a supplement. And all of a sudden it got us into this little discussion and I want you to weigh in because I think it's a phenomenon that's, that's out there and I think it's only getting bigger on the idea of performance enhancing supplements and, and the various things that people at these high levels are turning to, to be able to focus for these long hours and perform. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I, I believe the old poker guard, um, you know, the Matasau, the Help Me, the Ivies, all those guys, they weren't as concerned with health. They were more just concerned with going to the casino and gambling. And um, now I think people have realized, hey, you're competing against elite players all around the world what can I do to give myself the maximum edge to focus, to make the best decisions, to have the most mental control, the most mental clarity? And so I think a lot of guys turn to things like Adderall or neurotropics or you know, vegan diets or different things like that to help them really be the best version, to feel the best physically and mentally while they're playing. Is all of it in bounds? Um, good question. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the ethics police in terms of telling other people what they can put in their body. I personally don't want to be addicted to any supplements or feel like I'm dependent. And that includes coffee. You know, I don't, I don't want to feel like I need something to function. Um, my biggest vice is probably sugar. I have a bit of a sugar addiction that I'm working on. <laughs> Join the on. club. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm, that I'm working on. But other people, you know, if they're comfortable with and they're, they're fine being dependent on a substance like Adderall or, or coffee or anything, I mean, that's something that they got to work out in their own health. All I need is a milkshake to get through my day. Nick, let me ask you about this. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? I mean, that's a, a crazy question, Brent, right? Because <laughs> who, who, who of us could have predicted everything with COVID, with the poker, online poker boom, live poker getting, you know, hand, um, get their, get his, getting its hands chopped off, per se. And, uh, you know, everything switching online. I mean, who could have imagined that? So where are we going to be in five years? I hope that... Our planet is still healthy, that our planet is on fire from climate change, personally. That's one of my biggest fears. Um, but yeah, I mean, God willing, I'll still be playing poker and uh, still be competing at a high level and, and being able to do good with the money. Well, it certainly would be a privilege to have you still with us that long from now, provided Brett and I haven't already been fired and retired involuntarily. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Nick. We really appreciate it. We'll let you get back to doing your thing. What a classy guy. He really is, man. Right? The kid is all class. It's amazing what he puts everyone else ahead of him, right? Whether it's his family, the folks in Honduras, the families he's helping out. He's just really a selfless human being. And let's get to know him just a little bit better than you may have already gotten to know him, courtesy of that interview. It is Nick Mamoni, the winner of the $1,500 marathon. We talked about that over 300K, one of the top online players in history and just a philanthropist and all around good dude. Yeah, he's a great guy. And of course, 2009, he made a run. I thought he was gonna win the main event back in 2009, 15th place. And from almost one to actually one, here are the people that were at the top of the Twitter mountain. The winners of social media over the past week, we start with Chad Holloway of Poker News. And maybe he's not the winner. Maybe we should call Aliyam Shirovich the winner. Yeah, all the biscuits and gravy, backdoor nut flush for the Bosnian bandit, Aliyam Shirovich. I don't know how the money went in, Ali, but it did. I mean, how did we not just find another 26,000 somewhere under the rail to give Make us it a our, million. our seven figure pot? And Make by the way, million. Adamo, Michael Adamo beating Limitless Victor Malinowski for 842,000. The previous record was just set like a week ago. Yeah, Didn't apparently stand this is long. gonna happen every other week, Ali. Oh, these nosebleeds are gonna require a lot of Kleenex. And of course, Phil Helmuth, G4 all by his lonesome from the Bay Area to Cabo. Get back into the saddle with the World Series and you can't ever fly private without tweeting. You know. And you can't ever be Phil Helmuth without tagging celebrities, Randall Emmett Films, and of course, his fiance, Lala Kent. Uh, just ridiculous. What's that cost? About 500 bucks a flight, Ali? I'm going to take heavily the over, my friend. It didn't stop here, by the way. Helmuth then needed to let us see at what altitude he was flying and at what speed and at what distance his heading. How about the hashtag? Yeah, does anybody rock the hashtag game better than Phil Helmuth? Hashtag, I love maps and data. Just rolls off the tongue. Ali. Over under one and a half tweets if you click that hashtag. It would be... <laughs> Produce. <laughs> He's the original. I'll the take OG. the under.
the only one that's going to come out. Yeah. And this drew the attention of Joe Ingram, who actually has gotten to the point where he's just taking his hat off to the man. Just Captain Cloud himself. Joey Ingram never misses a beat, jumps in, plays a little fun with Helmuth and Gigi Poker. God, I love this line too. Genius marketing strategy? Genius marketing. He, he appreciates the hustle. What, what is he marketing exactly, Helmuth? Is it, is it uh, self-absorption, a dash of narcissism? What? He's, I think he's really just marketing his hashtag game, Ali. How to fly private on yeah. someone else's dime. I love that's Max my favorite, data. by the way. That's that's mm. my move. All right. If you don't know what's going on in your upcoming week, we two cruise, cruise directors are ready to tell you exactly what to expect. On the Lido deck, we have a $1,000 no limit hold'em six-handed, and then on the pool deck. $1,500 pot limit Omaha. Do you know any other cruise deck names? Ooh, no, unfortunately, I've never been How about the deck COVID before. deck? There yeah, should well, be a COVID deck sure. on every My cruise eyes, ship. by the way, are going to be fixed on 77 just following day two of that main event. Someone's going to make a run. By the way, Cal Burns, current chip leader in that main event. I thought it was Cal Burns. Burnt Cal. Cal. Burnt Cal? Good is for the diet. <laughs> what is wrong with you? So many things. So many things. We won't subject you to any more of this dumpster fire. We'll cut you loose. Have fun out there. Win some money. Let us know all about it. At Ali underscore Nishad at Buffalo Hanks. It's been real. Have fun. Summer's almost over. Rock and roll. Here we go. We'll see you guys next week right back here. Peace. <laughs>